Hi guys, we're back here again uh, with another great video. Thank you so much for subscribing yes, and following you. our journey. This video is for people considering going full-time RV living. And these are the questions you really need to ask yourself yes. before you consider doing it. And number one is the technical aspects of RVing. A big one that Cherie loves. Yeah, can we talk poopy? Is the sewer hose <laughs> and the black tank. Yes, I'm sure many, many people that are watching this know what I'm talking about. And this is the connection from the RV that goes to uh, the dump station or your campsite. Uh, sewer connection and you've got to wear gloves it's not a pretty picture it doesn't smell that great oh dude that is nasty and so I would maybe make sure you're okay with that uh, or have someone that is because you've never I've never done never it. touched the so sewer hose <laughs> <laughs> and besides the the dirty job of the sewer hose is there are other technical aspects of the RV like uh, the water hookup and which is just a hose basically but you've got uh, your electrical connection you've got raising and lowering the jacks making sure your RV is level and a lot of other potential things depending on what kind of RV that you have. Yeah. And these are things you don't have to think about when you live in like a townhouse, apartment, or a home. So it is something you need to really question, like am I willing to do all of that? Is it worth it to me? Yeah, you typically don't think about your sewer in your house <laughs> right. unless it gets backed up. <laughs> <laughs> Why, do you have that problem? <laughs> Another question you should ask is can you handle living in a smaller space, potentially much smaller than what you're used to in your current house or apartment? Right, where you may have some privacy, you have a bedroom door you can shut off, and we do have that here, but a lot of RVs don't. We see a lot of families, families with a few children, yeah. that are in a smaller RV than we're in, and they don't have the privacy. So it's something really you have to consider, you know, what kind of RV you want, which we, that needs to be a whole video by itself. And if you could be able to live in a smaller space with the people in your family. Yes, and occasionally we have guests stay here. We have. My kids have stayed yep. here with us. And it's, privacy is not a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> so It is close quarters, so uh, yeah. it is a little bit different. But um, yeah, I mean, you weigh the pros and cons, and that's such a small, small little con in my opinion. And my we book. have a large RV, a 40-foot yeah. fifth wheel, but there are some smaller ones, and we'd recommend a smaller one, actually, that you just tighter space, uh, but there are benefits yeah. to that. So you got to think about that if you're coming from a 2,000, 3,000 square foot home and moving into a 200, 300 square foot RV. Right. And if you hear the rain, that little pitter patter, that is something also with an RV that you get to hear more noises uh, than you might normally in like uh, an apartment or a house. And this rain sounds nice. It's yeah. pleasant. I like the actually. hearing the rain. And sometimes it gets so loud though that we can't hear each other speak. Exactly. Or if we're trying to watch a movie, uh, yeah. which is rare, but. Uh, <laughs> you can't watch it you crank the volume way up and uh, so that's a little bonus we weren't planning to talk about but since it's raining one. right now we don't know if you can hear it right now but yeah yeah <laughs> and it's it's kind of pleasant i like it so it's soothing i want to go to sleep now so the official question that you should ask yourself for this part is can you handle having less amenities right like there's no dishwasher yeah. yeah that was an adjustment for me and not having a full-size oven I've always cooked in full-size ovens and so now this one I don't even use this oven I use a convection oven instead I've just learned to adapt to what I have here but you have to ask yourself the question are you willing to adapt to the differences because the kitchen is not the same 
you're gonna have to be willing to go without maybe a washer and dryer and we're very right. fortunate to have we that. do have them but that's rare for rvs to have a washer and dryer you have to have, to have a large rv so you might be making a trip to a laundromat and if you've got kids you're traveling with that could be a lot of loads right and the campsite we're staying at now has little laundromats for each little pod area so a lot of the campsites do have little laundry facilities and shower facilities but not all of them will so that is something you have to consider yeah so you might have to deal with less uh, niceties uh, but again huge benefits on the other side Absolutely. of being free to go yes. wherever you want to go I think free is my favorite word freedom. yeah freedom exactly yes. freedom and fun <laughs> another question to ask yourself when you're living full-time in an RV or thinking about that is are you okay with being really close to your neighbors and I mean sometimes Really, really close. close. We had a couple with a young child next to us here just uh, for the last maybe month. Yeah. And we could hear her running around in, in the RV. In her RV. Yeah. yeah. Now the noises weren't off. It wasn't frequent. It wasn't often that we yeah. heard them. But when we when there was the noises, we heard them. It's pretty clear. Even when I'm in the kitchen uh, doing something to cook dinner, I can actually hear conversations right outside. Right outside the door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, on the flip side of that, are you willing to be without any neighbors? I mean, if you are boondocking or wild camping. In a beautiful area, you could be out there all by yourself. Exactly. So completely out there all by yourself and that might be kind of lonely, yeah. especially if you're doing it like single by yourself entirely. But even sometimes just as a couple or with a family, you may prefer to be around other people and so that is something to consider. Right. It's how close do you want to be to people and uh, if you're not having any interaction with other people is that going to bother you right another aspect to being out there by yourself is security are you willing to be out there all by yourself will you feel safe although you know so many people do it there don't seem to be any issue this is a big one for rv living is can you handle being away from your friends and family actually it's probably the biggest question you right. need to ask yourself yes yeah a lot of the times when you're traveling like we're getting ready to go around the country it's going to be a while before we get back to see our friends and family but we will make it there we will get to see them we stay in touch we see what they're doing on a daily basis and social media phone calls texts so we don't really have a problem with this but some people may have issues with not seeing their family on a more regular basis yeah we've definitely heard of that happening within the rv living community and so think about that but again you can take regular trips home if you want to and so you can work it out it really just depends on how you plan to rv and where you're going to be going and the last question that we have that we think you should be asking yourself before you go full-time in an rv is can you handle the judgment or opinion of others about this let's say unique lifestyle right a lot of people don't understand the full-time living in an RV lifestyle and they may think well that's kind of weird or when are you coming home and getting a real job and yes. <laughs> we don't want to come home and get a real job <laughs> yeah we and, like our real job and we really don't get a lot of uh, judgment no, uh, or don't. strong opinions from but friends we've and heard family. from other people that they do yes so they, that is a point we wanted to make they do and understand uh, like for us and I'm sure for you this lifestyle is a choice absolutely we could choose to have a house or an apartment yep. and this is not like being homeless and some people <laughs> think that speaking of judgment uh, actually do think people that RV a lot are homeless right and that's not true we don't really live anywhere we're trying to actually show people how this is possible for quote-unquote yes. normal people to do this yes because so many normal people do choose to do this more and more all the time yes. it's a huge growing trend and people are doing it with their family with young kids yes. 
pets and kids and yeah. RVing is not just for retired, retired right? people. <laughs> it's oh, amazing yeah. how many young people we see in these campgrounds. We don't know how it many really people are is. doing it full time, but we see the full time community is getting younger and younger and I'm inspired by them. Yeah, with the age of technology now and how connected we are, there's so many jobs that can now be done online or run your business online, and you don't have to be tied to one location. Right. And we we love exploring. Yes. And uh, so with that, ask yourself these questions, and I'll throw a little tip in here that if you don't have an RV yet, you should definitely rent one and take it out for at least a week or two weeks and experiment with it. And before you invest a lot of money in an of RV and really try to pretend that you're actually living in it, that will really give you a really great feel for what it will be like when you're living in it full time. Right, but get ready to get hooked. Yes, <laughs> and uh, I've been told some people like you either love it or hate it. Yeah, and so I don't know. I just I think I loved it from the beginning. So. I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a fun fact about us, right? Right. We're share that. Yeah, we're gonna share another fun fact. Okay. You go. Oh, I'm gonna go. What are we talking about? Oh, uh, it's computers. <laughs> okay, like. You're a Mac. And I'm a Mac, I'm a and PC. he's a PC. And let us know what side of the fence you are on. We're curious. It's so crazy when we're editing videos and, so and working. Is Shri want help with her Mac to do something? And he comes over and he's like, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it's, your computer. Yeah, it's really challenging. <laughs> I'm so used to a PC, and I know there's advantages to a Mac, especially with creative work like video editing. <laughs> And uh, so that's a fun little uh, debate we have. Yes. So let us know what your favorite computer <laughs> is in the comments, uh, just for fun. Yeah. And if you have any other questions you think uh, we Anything should... about the RV lifestyle. Yeah, the yeah. RV life as the thunder you know, happens outside. <laughs> and uh, so if you, you're an experienced RVer, at Add those questions. If you have other questions about the lifestyle, please do that. We want to make more videos just like this one. Yeah. So thank you for subscribing. Yes. And be sure to hit that bell when you subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, and share this video uh, with other people that you think might be interested in RVing. So yes, we just want to inspire others to be able to do the same thing if that is what they're interested in doing. Yeah, the rain is really coming down now. It's a great time to wrap up this video. We will see you guys in the next one. And thank you so much again for following along. And uh, take Bye. care.